Hi, my name is Bud Hunt. I'm an instructional technology coordinator for a school district here in northern Colorado. Before I did this work, I was a high school language arts teacher at a small alternative high school. Because it was a small school and I had bookshelves in my classroom, I was a self-appointed librarian at the school. I played that role for five years and the bookstore was our annex. I don't think that's why I'm here though. I don't usually get asked to provoke anyone. It just sort of happens. And then there's usually an uncomfortable silence after. But I digress. I want you to know that the work that you're about right now is nothing short of precious to me. It's important, and I'm looking forward to your discoveries. I wondered what a guy like me had to offer y'all, and then I realized that I had just the thing. I'm a patron. I'd just like to tell you my hopes for our future as a literate and democratic society. I hope you don't mind. For 28 years, I've been a visitor and friend of the libraries of the towns where I've lived, both here in Colorado and, as a younger man, in Cary, North Carolina. I wonder if you'd mind if I read to you for a moment. I wrote something the other day that is relevant to your work right now and is, I think, the real reason why I'm here. I had the opportunity earlier this week to sit in on a conversation with teacher librarians and other media staff during a kickoff event to start the school year. We were sharing some lunch and talking about our hopes for the year. Specifically, we were discussing how we will be working to build libraries that are places of community. That's a fine thing to be discussing. One media staffer said that it was important to her that her library be a safe place, a place where students could expect to be sheltered from, well, the stuff that can be unsafe about a school. And that was a good hope. Lots of head nodding. Lots of talk of sitting in circles and making things and libraries as spaces where crafts were made and stories were read and books were explored and questions were asked and often answered. And I thought that was good. They spoke of love without using the word. What could be wrong with that? And at the same time, I started to get angry. See, many of these library folk that I visited with the other day were facing new challenges as library folk. Some were in the library alone, whereas before they were part of a team. Others were entering into roles as clerks in the absence of a full teacher librarian. As we seek ways to save money in our school district, we've had to make hard choices about whether to staff classrooms or libraries. These are not easy choices. But when such kind and thoughtful people advocate for such important spaces as school libraries, well, I feel like maybe they shouldn't have to fight so hard. A project I've been loosely following is asking folks right now to think of libraries as enchanted spaces and of libraries as verbs. And I will think this year of this round table of library folk, dreaming of spaces where children find love and security and story and words and literacy. Spaces and places where the skeletons of dreams receive flesh and animation from books and pictures and websites and exploring and wondering and discovery. And I am enchanted. And I am enraged. This week, our state courts are hearing the case of a large coalition of school districts arguing that the state of Colorado is not meeting its constitutional mandate to provide a proper education for the children of the state. And our governor, while supportive of the intent of the lawsuit, is concerned that it might succeed because of what that might do to the state budget. What might not investing in enchanting spaces and people do to the state? That we have to have this argument in court suggests we've all lost. On the same day I got to have lunch with our library types, our school board president addressed the library group and talked about some of the research that he conducts in his day job. He studies institutions and public policy and, well, people. It's fascinating work. He mentioned during his talk that while it makes sense to consider the points and arguments that would lead to rational loyalty towards institutions one would value, folks don't fight for rational loyalty. They fight for, and will work to save, protect and defend the places and institutions with which they have emotional attachments. And I want our schools to be places of emotional attachment in the best possible way. Places of pride and hope and joy and love and respect and kindness and the best of what we might could be. We are, after all, beings of emotion and then ration, rather than the other way around, no matter how hard we might wish otherwise. And I wonder how to go after the emotional jugulars rather than the heels of rationality. As one who pretends rationality, I wonder about the best way to do this. And I remember the teacher who called across the parking lot to me the other day to tell me that she might have lost her way 
that she might not know what's worth talking about or spending time on lately. And I know what she means sometimes. And I write tonight because I don't know if I've lost my way or not either. But I seek enchantment and safety and hope and think they're within reach. And I remember a kid with glasses too big on a face too small and pants too tight with friends too far between who needed a quiet place to read where no names were called and the books and the stories could keep coming. And I remember the library folk who make sure that I could focus on the dreams in the books rather than the whispered pokes from the jerks. And I am enchanted anew. And so I'll keep reaching and seeking. And I am eager to begin a new school year, to reach again with smart folks, to try to be the best that we can be. You know, after reading that, I realized that there might be another reason why I'm here. More important than my role as a patron is that I'm the father of three delightful young ladies, and they're the patrons of tomorrow. Once a week, as often as we're able, we head over to the branch library in the shopping center near our home. Nestled beside and between a bakery and a coffee shop and a glitzy earring and accessory store, it's one of the greatest rooms in northern Colorado. It's our branch. Our branch. It's a place to read. It's a place to play. A place to borrow books and media. And while my children don't yet have library cards of their own, they're sure wearing out mine. Literally. Last month, the barcode fell completely off of my card. I had to ask very nicely for another one. I depend on you to figure out the place of libraries in my daughter's future. Because I was that funny-looking dude who needed a safe space yesterday, because I know there are so many others out there who need the space today and tomorrow, I want to ask you two simple questions that will, as provocateurs are supposed to do, poke you into thinking. Better yet, I hope I poke you into action, although I suspect you wouldn't be where you were doing what you were doing if you weren't already moving. One, how are you going to ensure that those safe physical spaces exist in a time of shrinking budgets and shrinking patience for all things public? And two, how will you extend those safe spaces into the places that I'm at online? I want to take my library with me wherever I go. I want my children's library, their public library, with them wherever they might happen to be. That's all. Make that happen. Make library a place in the physical and in the virtual. Make library a blanket that anyone can wrap themselves in wherever they happen to be. Most of us won't be amazing in the ways the world remembers and writes down. But all of us will want to be. And all of us want to hear the stories of people who are. Libraries, places of stories and storytellers, room chock full of what we can be when we're our best and worst and taking good notes are essential to this experiment we call the United States of America. And I'm not quite ready to let that go. Jad Abenrod is the producer of a show on public radio called Radio Lab. It's one of my favorite radio programs. And Mr. Abenrod just was selected as a MacArthur genius. He should have been, and I'm happy for him. On the MacArthur website, they have a short video of him talking about his work. At one point in the movie, he says that storytelling is a deeply musical act. He continues in the piece to share that he prefers radio to other media because by using only audio, he creates stories with his audience because they have to fill in some of the gaps of the information not carried through the air. And I like that. I think that the stories of tomorrow depend on the music of our libraries. And I do so like music. I hope you're doing good work. I hope that your time together is useful. I hope you're looking after each other. Thanks for listening.